<laughs> All right, let me say yes here. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to be here. Uh, this, uh, this is Dr. Pizarro from Elite Language Academy. Uh, we are pretty much uh, beginning our lesson three. It's been a success having many guests all over the world, especially in Latin America, which is pretty much our main target lately. Okay, uh, we are located pretty much in uh, USA, Florida, specifically in Weston, which is pretty much one hour from Miami airport. And I would say 35, th almost 30 minutes from Fort Lauderdale airport, if you're familiar with the, you know, the location. Anyways, um, let me just share my screen, if you allow me. Uh, I do have a nice audience. Just, just to let you know, just for a better, you know, production and effectiveness of the whole session, uh, try to be in mute, all right, while I am talking and using all the elements, all right? I see a background, I don't know where, let me, let me find out. This mm, girl, Vivas, ¿cómo estás? ¿Podrías ponerte en mute, por favor? Thank you, gracias, bienvenida. Okay, entonces yo veo, I see Carolina, Lisbeth, Lorena, John is here, Valeria, Valerie, Daniela. All right, okay, so let's start. I, I'm sure that more, more guests will come and with Daniela's help, you know, they will be in our room, in our session as well, a little late, it's okay. It's better late than never. I always say that to my students, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's, let's begin. I'm gonna share my screen right now. All right, I prepare um, a colorful uh, presentation. Uh, I avoid using many slides just to give you a highlight. You know, these are pretty much the main dashboards and academic dashboards that I will be uh, sharing with you progressively. This is my English lab, one of the tools that I normally use and our faculty, uh, my team, you know, uses in classes in person here in US and of course uh, live uh, via Zoom and Google Meet as we've been doing it uh, for a while. I, I, will, uh, I will be sharing as well our Cambridge platform which is for our uh, accelerated English program. So we'll be exploring that. And I open up two English levels for uh, my English lab in a way is uh, for the academic English program trans transition level levels one and levels two. Um, depending on the rhythm of the class, I will be combining both. And of course, based on your participation, okay? So pretty much, you know, the main purpose of having this class is to build foundation, build a strong foundation and techniques in English, okay? Improving yourselves, uh, practicing as hundred percent. So let me share my presentation. Um, hmm. mm -hmm. All right. So this is pretty much LS English Life Lesson Three: uh, Practical English Tips from Basic, Intermediate, Advanced Levels which pretty much are applicable or, you know, for any English level basics, like Anthony, as I met him uh, before we formally start the session, and uh, Lorena and others who, and of course, you know, uh, some other guests who are more advanced. I think that they are all applicable for any stage of your learning experience, all right, and exposure to English. Pretty much, hopefully, we'll be doing, you know, an overview of ELA, Elite Language Academy, Combining English skills lesson, showing you the two platforms, giving you some highlights, you know, of uh, some materials that are pretty much convenient to, to apply in English language learning. Uh, we'll be incorporating interactive activities. And of course, I will be giving you the tips, you know, the main highlights for any other um, levels in English. All right. So pretty much our mission statement, we exist, we strive and inspire to enhance our international community. Uh, we pretty much, you know, plant the seeds to uh, 
learn English, speak English, be confident, and of course, learning the culture. All right, so you can say uh, our vision, we aspire to be a world-class conductor that will empower our students to be global leaders, assuring their language education to obtain their ultimate, ultimate professional goals. In other words, pretty much uh, it's applicable for high school students, uh, college students, professionals, uh, people in general who want to move on and improve in their lives. Uh, avoiding having the gaps of the English language, okay? So, how a lead language wo uh, works, pretty much, we take courses. These courses are pretty much mainly virtual, son, son cursos virtuales, pero cada módulo incorpora clases eh, privadas en Zoom, y también eh, ahora en persona, las personas que están locales, eh, desde el día un número uno que se activan los códigos, eh, ustedes son designados a un profesor. Este profesor monitorea el progreso, quiere decir que ustedes no hacen ni toman el curso solo en línea. Y definitivamente no es una, una colección de videos eh, de instrucción, no. Sí se incorpora algunos videos de instrucción, de tutoriales, pero también está incorporado el laboratorio de idiomas que les voy a mostrar progresivamente. Eh, y tienen obviamente las sesiones como esta, no tanto para repetir lo que ven en la clase, sino para eh, reforzar más la gramática, reforzar los puntos, aclarar eh, lecciones que tal vez a, a, a pesar de los módulos y los materiales no, estuviese, no eran claros, ni el laboratorio de idiomas, simplemente se direcciona la clase o esa pregunta objetivamente y eh, se refuerza lo que es la parte del listen speaking, la producción, eh, el, el, eh, las situaciones de la vida diaria se incorporan con el idioma eh, o combine language you know language learning is true that you're taking a grammar class pero no solo la, la lección de gramática también se, se incorpora reading listening speaking and writing and of course always repetition and always enhancing your uh, four language skills as soon as you finish, completan el curso y que eso es nuestra misión y la misión del equipo de la Facultad de Elite Language Academy. Eh, tienen una pequeña prueba, obviamente, completan todas las sesiones y se les da su certificado que lo pueden mostrar a, a sus jefes si están en alguna compañía, aplicando en la universidad y simplemente luce bien porque siempre, obviamente, demuestra que han estado dedicados cierto tiempo a, una, a, a mejorarse, a desarrollarse profesionalmente y en este caso también eh, personalmente. Los servicios eh, de Elite Language Academy, ELA, hace, tenemos el programa del Academic English que aquí le llamamos el EAP Program, English for Academic Purposes, en inglés que se utiliza a las personas para los alumnos internacionales que están pasando el TOEFL el IELTS o simplemente hacen la transición y la capacitación para que de una vez sean, puedan ejercer una carrera, convalidar los cursos, etcétera. Si estás realmente interesado en, la, en, en el enfoque académico, simplemente quiero aprender inglés por el trabajo, eh, simplemente lo quiero incrementar, pulir el idioma inglés, tenemos el English Accelerated Program, y independientemente tenemos los programas de TOEFL, College, Prep, Business Conversation. Y ahora tenemos eh, el, la, el programa de International US High School, que es realmente una gran alternativa para muchos muchachos que están fuera y que a la larga puedan estudiar en los Estados Unidos. Eh, estando en sus propios países, pueden llevar el, eh, las clases de secundaria, tener un certificado un diploma secundario de Estados Unidos certificado, ya que estamos trabajando de la mano con US Academics. Entonces, eh, eh, está, todos los detalles están en nuestra página web. Y bueno, eh, voy a empezar en breve la lección de, eh, de esta sesión eh, presentándoles eh, las plataformas eh, de Cambridge LMS y My English Lab. Okay, so let's start. So let me minimize this. I also prepared uh, before going over the, mm -hmm, before going over, you know, I would like to really share 
some uh, highlights of grammar, okay? So this is a nice grammar reference, all right? Uh, pretty much for intermediate, could be basic, advanced. You know, you know, learning a language is very repetitive, but if you want to speak, of course, you need to know, you need to know, learn the grammar structures. So these are the ways that you compare. You know, we have expressions with superlative, eh, más fuerte, más barato. Eh, utilizamos hard, el más barato de todo, superlative, hardest. El más fácil de todo, easiest. Eh, estoy súper feliz, no tengo, ya no puedo comparar más. Utilizo el superlativo y el superlativo, la, la, eh, la terminología al final es IEST. Ah, you know, ya, yo considero que anteriormente lo han escuchado. El más, caro que todo, el más caro de todos, most expensive. Y hay ciertas secciones irregulares. Eh, no de, nosotros no decimos gooder o goodest. You know, si es en, en, el tiemp, en, la, en la composición, en la estructura superlativa. We have good, best, bad, worst, el, pe el peor, el mejor, diría yo, best, eh, most fun, el más divertido. Eh, consecutivamente tenemos eh, los, los auxiliares, podría, puedes, can, could. Eh, obviamente esta clase es una introducción, es very general, demasiado. Eh, too, too many, much. Yo utilizo many para cuando con eh, sustantivos que yo puedo usar. Utilizo much, uncountable, when I cannot, like money. We say too much money. Noise, we cannot count the noise, but we say, uh, you know, we, that's the distinction that we use in English, many and much. We also have, and that's what I was, I was just pretty much leading you because I will be combining tenses in some practices and of course in conversation. Uh, present continuous, el presente continuo, se forma con el verbo to be que lo hemos estado eh, comentando en las dos primeras lecciones. Eh, am, is, and are. Como anteriormente dijimos, son el verbo to be en inglés es un verbo independiente. Uno puede formar oraciones eh, afirmativas, negativas e interrogativas sin ayuda. Okay, in other words, what do you mean? I can say she is pretty. I can also say she isn't pretty. And how do I make a question? Is she pretty? And how do I answer? Yes, she is. No, she isn't. That's the typical basic English class, English one, two, and three that you normally have. But what happens if I don't have uh, in the verb to be and I'm using to drink, to drink a little bit of water, I'm using to eat, dance, talk, sleep, smile. Well, we have helpers, you know, in present tense, do and does, to make questions, to make negative uh, sentences, uh, and of course, to be able to answer because they are dependent verbs. They are not independent like the verb to be, all right? So I say she, she walks, she plays, she drinks, and, re and we always add yes to the third person, okay, of, uh, of every single, every single time, cada vez que yo haga una oración con he, she, and it, eh, es una regla general que hay que aumentar la S al verbo, okay? So I say she plays, they eat, they eat is they, so there's no S. What about he? He eats, he plays. What about you? You eat, you play, no S. We only add the S for action verbs for he, she, and it, all right? So I know it's quite fast, but it's just a little refresh. Present continuous, presente continuo. Uh, ando, endo, como es en, 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 en castellano. Eh, estoy trabajando, I am working. Eh, trabajo, I work, all right? Trabajé, ya es tiempo pasado, I worked. Eh, aumento la ED y ya es pasado, I worked. Eh, pasa, estoy, esto, estaba o estuve trabajando, ¿no? I was working. Y aquí es donde el pasado, el pasado continuo, está aquí también. Es todo es una 
tabla de todos los verbos para darles más o menos idea en presente, en pasado, en la forma de pasado, decide, decided, es en pasado. We have an ed ending, walked, walked, dance, danced, and so forth. Carry, carried, plan, planned. Uh, but también hay verbos irregulares. Entonces, para eso sí hay que aplicar un poquito de memoria. For example, the past tense of see is saw. The past tense of come is came. The past tense of uh, build with D. The past tense will be built with T. All right. So this, since this is a combined English level class, uh, and I will be doing listening and speaking exercises, I believe that it's a great move to incorporate or at least present, you know, pretty much an overview of grammar. Um, it's just as a reference, just a grammar reference. Tenses, present perfect is really quite complex. Let me go over one more, which is um, the one that I just shared. Uh, it was a little advanced, intermediate advanced. This is more basic, A1 and A2, basic based on our uh, assessment chart. Uh, we use the frequency adverbs in present tense, but uh, they go before the verb. We don't say you arrive us usually, mm, no. We, we normally place the frequency, uh, the, the, you know, the frequency words before, the frequency adverbs before the verb. I say you usually arrive, we often arrive. Sometimes, algunas veces, I, they sometimes arrive at nine o'clock. Uh, I rarely play tennis, you know. Um, I always, I always practice yoga, you know. That's what I do the most, okay? So, siempre, generalmente, a menudo, algunas veces, rara vez, nunca, never. Eh, también definitivamente como les estaba diciendo nuevamente nuestro amigo verb to be which is independent these are the forms he is he is he is an officer uh, she is not an officer negative uh, negative uh, words and questions uh, what about verbs that are not the verb to be that's what I was telling you do you does she okay do you go does she go and based on that, you know, question, we will say, yes, you do. Yes, we do. Yes, they do. Does she, does she play or does she go to meetings? Yes, she, yes, she does. You know, why? Because I'm using a verb that is not a verb to be. Hopefully you remember, you know, I wish I could practice more grammar, but in a way we cannot ignore grammar. Uh, we cannot ignore sentence structure. We always need to know where to place the subject, how or in what ways we conjugate the verbs, and of course the complement. All right, so let's start uh, with this exercise, and I would like uh, your participation. Uh, this is uh, pretty much level one. Let's start with level two. All right, let's see. Uh, it says, everyday heroes, take care of yourself. I believe that, uh, what about take care of yourself, all right? Uh, we'll be concentrating on listening in this case. So it will be nice, feel free to listen and feel free to repeat. This is your lesson, okay? This is for you. Okay, we have this lab. Mm -hmm. So all what we need to do, uh -huh, you have, the, you know, you just need to listen and of course record. For example, chronic. Say it. diabetes is a chronic disease. Mm -hmm. L listen first. Diagnose. I usually see a doctor to diagnose my health problems. Symptom. One symptom of diabetes is feeling thirsty. Treatment. You should get treatment for your health problem. Habits. She has healthy eating habits. Monitor. 
I see my doctor every month to monitor my health problem. Excellent. So, translation, not necessary, chronic. Algo crónico, diabetes. So listen and repeat. Now you may listen, okay? And of course, repeat. Chronic. Chronic. Diabetes is a chronic disease. So just say chronic. Chronic. Excellent. Thank you for participating. Please, please, this is your class, you know? Listen and repeat. Diagnose. Diagnose. I usually see a doctor to diagnose my health problems. Mm -hmm. Remember, usually, you know, generalmente. That's what I show you, you know, a little bit of review of grammar, all right? Is the verb to be, you know? Uh, and then over here is an action verb, the verb to see. Remember, usually? So that goes before. I usually see a doctor. You normalmente, generalmente veo al doctor, all right? Diagnosed. So just, just, just to put everything together, okay? That's the transition from the grammar to practice and hands-on. What you're doing right now is being exposed. You are listening to a native speaker. You are applying the sound. You're listening to the sound first, and then you're applying the sound. How many times it takes for you to pretty much produce the same sound? One time, two times, three times? Doesn't matter. It's your own learning, you know, in your own virtual space, in your own time, all right? so. So we got chronic, diagnose, we got symptom. Symptom, repeat. One symptom, symptom of diabetes symptom. is feeling thirsty. Excellent, symptom. Now, please, don't be shy, no sean timido, say treatment. Treatment. You should get treatment for your health problem. Treatment. Excellent. Treatment. treatment. Habits. She has healthy eating habits. She has healthy eating habits. Excellent. And what about this one? Monitor. I see my doctor every month to monitor my health problem. Monitor. Monitor. I have a question. I have a question uh, for any participant. You know, you may raise your hand or just, just say it. Um, I would like to know uh, some examples of healthy eating habits, you know, eating healthy. What could it be? What's the meaning of eating healthy? Having healthy eating habits. Who can tell me? Okay. Mm -hmm. e eating fruit, fruits. Excellent, eating fruits, yes. So eating fruits is, you know, is an example. It's a very good example of having eating habits, yes. Uh, having, you know, good, healthy eating habits. Uh, what about eating French fries? Will that be, is that, is eating French fries a good example of uh, healthy eating habits? Yes, it is, or if no, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't, yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, what about symptoms? Over here, it says one symptom of diabetes is feeling thirsty. Okay. Now, that's, that's, that's a specific symptom of diabetes. What about when you have a cold? What is, you know, what are the, uh, which ones are the typical symptoms? A cold or the well-known COVID, which is like a cold. <laughs> we all know it, right? We have to learn it. Yes. Coming. Be, it may be when you are coughing or you have fever. Yes, cough, uh, you are co you're, you're, you're coughing, you have fever. What about when you are the chills? You got the chills. Yes, very good. I love that word. That's great. Chills. What else? And then I think you feel a little um, with, without energy. Um, yes. That, like that. Down. Yes, you are right. You know, people tend are tired. You know, you just want to sleep. And guess what? There is another well-known, very typical symptom is body ache. You know, have you, have you felt that? You know, I think that I'm getting a cold, you know, body ache. You know, it's just like you have, 
is very, you know, you don't have, you're not comfortable, you know, even from sleeping. So you have body ache, you know, your arms, your legs, everything. All right, excellent. Uh, so we have chronic. Uh, what other chronic diseases can you, can you tell me? Any participant, Valeria, are you there? What could be chronic? A chronic is not there. Who is? Yes, uh, a chronic disease. Yes. Okay, over here, they, they, they are pretty much working and playing around with diabetes, but what could be another chronic disease? Um, let me think. Um... Uh, what about Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease, Valeria, is when people have some, um, a lot of uh, issues, you know, problems with digestion. Um, you know, may, maybe uh, gastritis? It's yeah. gastritis. Yes. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's, that's, that's pretty much related to Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. It's okay. one of them. Yes, it's very related. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's move on. You did great. Thank you. All right. Then we have another, uh, another activity, additional activity, you know? Listen to the auto, pay attention to the verb form and click the ones you hear. Okay, so for example. Self-care is becoming more popular these days, especially with young people. Okay, this is the situation, okay? Les voy a explicar. Eh, van a escuchar y se says, listen to the audio, okay? Pay attention to the verb forms and click the ones you hear, all right? Click the ones you hear. For example, I want to model one. Self-care is becoming more popular these days, especially with young people. Okay, if I am the student, I need to write is becoming because that's what he's saying. Uh, can we double check the, the, my answer? Yes, you can always self Self-correction. We can always emphasize self-correction. It's my learning. Self-care is becoming more popular these days, especially with young people. I believe that I did a good job. It's becoming, yes, he said that. Okay, now is your turn. Okay, ahora es el turno de ustedes. Me dicen así, indefectivamente. ¿Tienen la respuesta? Me dicen. Is that okay? Can we start? Yes? Yes? Can yes. we start? Yes, thank you. Yes. All right. Okay, so this is our class. This is an, you know, this is our interaction and this is your experience, all right? Remember, we're using my English lab. All right, let's go for the second one. Hmm. Itchaceuticals are phone apps that doctors and patients can use together to manage health problems. <laughs> Digiceuticals are phone apps that doctors and patients can use together to manage health problems. So which one is that? You can tell me, class. Could you play it again? Of course, of course. Can you use Digiceuticals are phone apps that doctors and patients can use together to manage health problems. So do, do I underline uh, can use or use together? Can you? Okay, let's play that again. Digiceuticals are phone apps that doctors and patients can use together to manage health problems. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go for the next one, all right? In fact, a study by Harvard University showed that these symptom checkers are correct only 34% of the time. What do I underline? Show. Shows or showed? Showed. The first one or the second one? The second, second one. Second one. Okay. Okay, let's go to this one. And an incorrect diagnosis can lead to a dangerous situation, especially if you have a serious illness or chronic disease and don't get the right treatment. So which one do you, you can use? 
and half. The first one or the second one? The second one. Second one. And then? And half. Okay, let's play it again. And an incorrect diagnosis can lead to a dangerous situation, especially if you have a serious illness or chronic disease and don't get the right treatment. So, if you have, if you have um, okay, one. The first one. The first one. All right. Do we hear this one? I don't think so, right? I guess. I think it's great that more people are using the internet to educate themselves and stay healthy. The so second we, one. We underline? Second. The second one. Okay. Guess what? Submit. <gasps> Yes, congratulations. You get a hundred. Six over six. Excellent. Well done. Yes, well done. Uh, just in case, you know, uh, let's go for another one from your same level. Uh, let's go for endangered languages. That's a different theme. That's a different theme. Uh, pretty much, but we'll go from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What more be listening? Uh, okay, let's pretend you know that you're taking this class, all right, regularly. All right, uh, what does it mean? So, uh, if, if I'm your teacher or any other of our team members is your teacher, you know, we'll be checking. You know, it's true that the system gives you a feedback, but we have access to all what you do. All right, so for example here, this is a great example. It says, it's true that you are learning or you are practicing and the main target is your listening and speaking, but it's still, you know, uh, it's part of the lesson, it's part of the instruction to take notes, which is so important, all right? And that really, you know, your reading comprehension, your listening comprehension, besides your pronunciation, and of course, your grammar is there one more time. So these are the instructions. Listen to a lecture, all right? I invite you please to take a piece of paper. I know that you don't have the system, you don't have the code, but you can do this activity with me. Take, uh, take a piece of paper, all right? Un papelito de un cuaderno, okay? Take a piece of paper. Uh, si son muy tecnológicos, lo pueden hacer en notes de su teléfono, también lo pueden hacer, use your notes, you know? Uh, your same computer. Um, so, so you take notes, all right? But guess what? We will concentrate on reasons and then examples. Razones y ejemplos, okay? So it's a combined activity. You know, it's a whole mixture. Listen to a lecture, which I'm gonna play it, about reasons. Reasons to what? To save endangered languages. Languages that, you know, are people are, uh, pretty much are not speaking, you know, are not practicing anymore, like those dialects, you know? So you will create a chart. Okay, this chart is already here, but you can do the same, you know? You can, you know, do your own chart. Pueden hacer su propio cuadro, el que está ahí como ejemplo. So you create a chart like the one below, all right, to take notes as you listen, mientras que van escuchando. You take notes, all right, on the reasons and then examples. In other words, when you take notes, class, it's not like you are rewriting, all right, or you are transcribing every single word that I'm saying or the speaker is saying. No, that's not taking notes. It's pretty much listening and writing keywords, you know, just words, phrases, names, and examples, all right? So as you can see, this is part of your academic training. It's true that you are learning English, but you are also learning the skills that are applied and are necessary for any college you know, level that you wanna go or high school level. Or pretty much, you know, if you're done, you have so many degrees, you've reached all what you want in life. Well, guess what? You achieve a great English level, period. You know, and it's a great conquer, you know? So are we ready? Can we start? Podemos empezar? Yes. Can you give me a happy face? Yes. 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 No, thank you. Okay. So you all have a pen or you have your 
no, you know, your keypad, your notes. So your, your job right now is to listen and distinguish. You need to distinguish which ones are the reasons and then the examples. One, two, and three. Why should we save endangered languages? Let's talk about two important reasons. One reason to save languages is to learn new ways of thinking and expressing ideas. Many endangered languages have special vocabulary and grammar that we can't find in other languages. For example, in Greenland, people have four different words for wind. Another example comes from a Native American language called Cherokee. In this language, you can change the verb to mean a different time of day. We can't do that in English. So we can learn a lot from studying the vocabulary and grammar of different languages. A second reason we should save endangered languages is to help us learn about the world's plants and animals. Scientists say that we only know about 20% of the world's plants and animals. We still need to learn 80%. Often the names and information about these plants and animals are only known in endangered languages, and this information can help us. For instance, we are still learning about plants in South America that can be used to make medicines to treat illnesses. So learning and saving these languages can teach us important information about the world and save people's lives. Okay. All right. The do you have a chance right. to get some notes? Yes? Yes, both. Excellent. Okay, let's listen this again, all right? Just to double check. You know, we normally do this twice, you know, in any, you know, and of course with more advanced courses like four, five, six, you know, and of course, if you are in a TOEFL prep, we assume that you already speak English, you've, you've achieved the whole journey learning English, course you know we need to measure how fast and how well you do every single question but at this stage of building your skills as we are doing it now or if you were doing it if, you know when you take this type of classes is your own rhythm remember keep in mind you know and I'm really talking as an educator and at, at the same time as a second language learner because I was I was also you know, I'm all, I was also a second language learner. You know, my main language is Spanish. I was born in Peru, uh, like some of you. And I've been here almost 32 years. Yes, it's been a while, but uh, my native language is Spanish. And I know this has been a process, you know, is it possible to achieve that academic English level and good level? Yes. Uh, do we need exposure? 100% always, you know, if English is your second language, just, just give, this is just a, a little parenthesis before we start, we start all over again this reading. If, uh, if you learn a second language, we're in constant practice, you know, for example, if you travel to a country, to a place that English is not spoken, guess what? I know that I need to, you know, watch movies in English, listen to, you know, English, you know, uh, podcast, read my English book, talk to my American friends, you know, because guess what? You lose the language. It's normal. No lo practicas, igual la fluidez está en riesgo. Why? Because it's still your second, third language. So it's constant practice, constant exposure, repetition. All right. Now with technology, it's really possible. You are in Peru, you are in Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, uh, Spain, you know, Austria, in any part of the world. It's just, it's just knowing, you know, what to watch, what to listen, what to read, you know. All right. So that was a little parenthesis as a teacher, you know. I cannot help being a teacher. All right. So one, two, one, three. Let's listen again. Remember. You will review, you know, I assume that some of you already has, already have, uh, you know, a list of reasons and example. So you just double check. Okay, one, two, three. Good luck. Why should we save endangered languages? Let's talk about two important reasons. One reason to save languages is to learn new ways of thinking and expressing ideas. Many endangered languages have special vocabulary and grammar that we can't find in other languages. 
For example, in Greenland, people have four different words for wind. Another example comes from a Native American language called Cherokee. In this language, you can change the verb to mean a different time of day. We can't do that in English. Yeah. So we can learn a lot from studying the vocabulary and grammar of different languages. Yeah. A second reason we should save endangered languages is to help us learn about the world's plants and animals. Scientists say that we only know about 20% of the world's plants and animals. We still need to learn 80%. Often the names and information about these plants and animals are only known in endangered languages, and this information can help us. For instance, we are still learning about plants in South America that can be used to make medicines to treat illnesses. So learning and saving these languages can teach us important information about the world and save people's lives. Excellent. Who would like to share some? some reasons and examples. Remember, I'm gonna just go back to the instructions. You listen a lecture already about reasons, reasons to save endangered languages. All right, so that was pretty much the task. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can say uh, the two reasons. Yes. Uh, one of the reasons is to learn new ways of thinking and expressing ideas mm -hmm. because no, I, I don't want to take the, the turn to that someone else can, can say. <laughs> but, and the other reason yeah. is that uh, it can help us learn about the world, plants and animals. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, who got, uh, uh, it says uh, that uh, we haven't, we need to learn 80% of what? That was part of the examples. Who got that? There was a section talking about plants and animals. And that's, then the second, that's the second reason, in fact. Uh, it helps us learn about um, words, about the world that if, we don't study the, these dead languages or these dying languages, endangered languages, we would miss. For example, 80% of the information is mm -hmm. contained in those languages, as for example, the plants and the animals mm -hmm. and the benefits that these animals and plants could give us, you know, like the American plants for medicine. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any other participant who would like to share reason, examples, anything. Okay, so what about um, expansion of this activity? What about, who can tell me? You know, I know that we have a, quite an audience tonight. Some, some participants join a little late, but I believe that I really want you to be engaged, you know, in this part of the lesson. If you just got here and you couldn't, you know, listen to the whole conversation uh, once or twice, uh, what about the topic? Who can tell me about these endangered languages based on, based on your culture? You know, this is a diverse class. It's great. Many people from other places. So uh, pretty much the perspective, you know, and the example was based, you know, Oh, we don't have this in English. It was the English, the American perspective toward the English language. But what about your culture? What about the reality, you know, uh, you know regarding you know, languages, dialects in your country, in your culture, in Spanish, your place, you know, the, where you come from? Who can tell me or any comments? I you came from, uh, oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Who's talking? Okay, go, go on, okay, go on. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, now I was going to say that I come from um, La Rioja, Argentina, South America. Yes. And in the, for example, the same, and the second reason that it talks about the South American plants, it mm -hmm. says that um, they are used to, to make medicine, for example. So here in La Rioja, we have a lot of that lot of plants that we can use um, from that. And I don't know if 
if the English word would be the same if we try to translate that. Yeah. That's why they say that the vocabulary and the grammar, it's uh, help, helping us for that. No? For sure, for sure. Uh, what about in Peru? Any, any, any related, you know, comment? Remember that this is the topic. Bueno, le voy a preguntar esto, chico, porque en el caso de que Okay, mute, please. All right. There was a gentleman, una voz de un caballero, antes de, de la que acaba de participar. There was, uh, you were, what, what were you going to say about the topic? Uh, yes, the, 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 the expression, the, the first reason is yes. the, the dangerous of, of the language because it has a lot of uh, a vocabulary and different time of the, the, the grammar or uses in the different time. Yes, mm -hmm. um, um, it is one the, the the first reason. Yes, but yes, part of the reason. Yeah, but just an expansion, you know. And I will repeat again. I would like to pretty much uh, uh, see, you know, and analyze or comment based on your. Uh, Spanish language in this case, or any dialect that is not in use anymore, that it, people don't practice it that much, or in what ways, you know, we can preserve them, we can save them. Any idea? Maybe, for example, the way we, we prepare food, for example, there are many food that we, we prepare with corn, for example, in Peru and Argentina and all these countries in South America, and that they are not known uh, worldwide. And the way we prepare these dishes and the uh, seasoning we use, I think saving these languages, these uh, endangered languages will help a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and also because uh, we need to borrow words from other languages, yes. If we think of lingua franca. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Switch to student view, I'm going to switch to. I wanna just uh, show you this video, which is great. I still, we're still using the same platform of uh, my English lab, which is based on the audience. You know, I really want you to you know, um, take advantage of this session and uh, uh, have more exposure. So I'm gonna play this video, all right? It says uh, predict, you know, predict is the, the topic here. Um, this video is about the characteristics of the oldest, middle and youngest children in a family, all right? Do you think scientists believe that uh, there are common characteristics for all oldest, middle and youngest children, all right? You may read this, you know, uh, again, I believe that is visible. I'm gonna make it bigger, I wanna try, yes. It's, it's bigger, all right. So you may read it on your own again, all right? Uh, so one more time, since we're stressing listening skills, all right? Of course, incorporating always grammar, vocab, you know, but, um, I think is extremely uh, helpful, all right, to, to watch this video and do this activity. And it's quite easy, you know, won't take us too much time, just true or false. Take notes of the main ideas and details, and then we'll just share them if, if they are true or false together, all right? Okay, are we ready? Yes? Another, yes, another activity. Yeah, for you, I want you to practice. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. thank you, all right, <laughs> I'm not alone. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, no, no, but let me lower, all right, one, two, and three. We are always learning more about what it means to be the oldest in your family of siblings or the youngest. Well, we have news tonight about birth order and health. Here's John Berman on health, wealth, and birth order. Fans of the Brady Bunch know that Marsha, the eldest Brady girl, seems to get the most attention. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha! But according to a new study, she might also get the most allergies. 4% of firstborns get food allergies, 3.5% of secondborns, even less for third. 
Scientists think maybe changes in the womb by the time baby two or three comes help build a stronger immune system in kids. Also, parents who hyper-sterilize everything for firstborns might back off for younger kids. And rolling around in the dust and germs might also boost immunity. Good for Cindy Brady and younger siblings who sent us pictures on Facebook, but it's not all good. Take intelligence. One study found the IQ of firstborns three points higher than second children and four points higher than third. Maybe it's all that special time with mom and dad. When the firstborn comes along and there are no younger siblings, they've got 100% of parental attention and parental investment. But that can mean greater expectations and a greater sense of responsibility. Hence, leadership? 21 of the first 23 astronauts were firstborn. A disproportionate number of our presidents and CEOs? 43% firstborn, 33% middle, 23% youngest. Maybe this all helps explain the differences between Jimmy and Billy Carter, Bill and Roger Clinton. In my family, my older sister, Erin Plaid, is a CEO, more successful and smarter. Me? I ended up on TV. We younger siblings do have to do things to get attention, be more creative, take more risks, act like rebels. Ben Franklin was the youngest of 17 kids. Stephen Colbert, youngest of 11. We're also 50% more likely to play dangerous sports, which explains why older sister Marcia had such trouble with football. On behalf of younger siblings everywhere, she had that coming. John Berman, ABC News, New York. Yeah. I watch him also uh, every morning, you know, in CNN. This is still, this is still doing his job. All right, anyways. All right, are we ready? So what do you say? Hmm, there is a relationship between birth order and a child's health, intelligence, and personality. True or false? Listen, there's no judgment. This is our practice, okay? True, false, you know, just, what do you say, class? True or false? I'm true. your assistant. True. true. True, okay. All right, true. Let's go. Comprehension. All right, comprehension. Read the question, use your notes. Hopefully you have your notes, all right, to help you choose the correct answer. Oh, okay, if you need to watch the video again, all right, watch it. Well, unfortunately, you know, our time is running, so we don't have time, but let's try, all right? And number two, which child gets the most allergies? A, B, or C? The oldest. The oldest. Okay. Which of the following may make a child's immune system stronger? Just read it. Being the oldest child in the family, parents who sterilize everything, uh, like me when I had my first baby, rolling around in dust and germs. So. The third one. The third one, okay. Four. Which child has the highest IQ? The, the, oldest. the oldest. The oldest, all right. Okay, which of the following professionals is most likely to be a firstborn child? A comedian, an astronaut, or a football player? Astronaut. Astronaut. Okay. <laughs> which, of the, <laughs> which of the following people was a firstborn child? based on the video, of course. Roger Clinton, Benjamin Franklin, or Jimmy Carter? The firstborn was uh, Clinton. Okay. Remember, I'm your assistant. Which child is most likely to play dangerous sports? Youngest. The youngest. The youngest, all right. So let's submit. All right. All right, so your score, our score is, our score is what? 86, not too bad, right? So uh, true, all right, you have the, okay, the whole revision here, only one, only one. Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Anyway. Because Benjamin Franklin was the youngest. <laughs> I know. Anyways, but guess what? We, you always have the chance to refresh with the system. This is your lab. This is your, uh, you can always clear the answers and do it again. Switch to teacher view, I will, all right. Okay, let me close this, all right. Mm, let me say goodbye to, um, to 
for my English lab. And just, I only have time, we have time because I really want to share quickly, not that quickly, you know, quick, uh, the tips, remember the tips, you know, for every single level. Uh, but let's do this. Uh, uh, this, this, uh, this platform is uh, based on our Cambridge LMS for our accelerated English program. It has similar exercises and the lab is quite similar, not the same from my English lab, but it's absolutely great. It actually, you know, incorporates every single, you know, uh, language skill, grammar, listening, reading, speaking, writing, everything is based on the module. So this is for our regular English classes uh, from English one to English six, the English uno al English seis, or English uno a b, uno, uno, uh, uno b, eh, utilizamos uh, this platform, all right? Anyways, this is our, um, let me show you, this is my golden key bag, all right? This is the content, this is the ebook. The references is multilingual, you, you know, uh, Portuguese, English, Spanish, Russian, many languages, you have the reference, the grammar references, all right, based on the unit. The blog, the teacher, remember that we assign a teacher. So um, your, your teacher is in constant communication. And of course, you know, you have your resources, you have your drawer here, uh, and you have your content promotion. So I will show you that with time. The resources, you will be able to find the book of the scripts, the readings, the, the, the audios, the videos, everything. Okay, but let's, let's enhance your vocab you know, and remember it's a combined uh, class. So it's true and I'm, I'm happy and satisfied that it was an, you know, we have an active learners, active participants uh, toward more an advanced intermediate or beginning intermediate high level. Uh, well, we also have guests who are still beginning, you know, the whole journey. So this is level three, it's not too uh, low, all right? So building vocab, natural features. Look at the pictures and listen to the expressions. Match the natural features with the pictures. So, uh, a mountain. Mm -hmm. Class, what about this? Which one is the answer? You already saw how I, what I did, right? An island, a river, a lake, a reef, a glacier. Okay. okay, so what about this one? What is this? An ocean. An ocean. So where do I find ocean? Right here. All right. What about this one, class? Uh, a desert. A desert. Okay. A desert. All right. Remember that we have a similar word, it's called dessert. You know, dessert is posted, remember. And this is desert. When you go to the restaurant, most people, most students uh, get confused. Dessert or desert. Oh, I want a dessert or oh, I want a desert. No, you want a dessert at the restaurant, all right? And this is a desert, all right? Just, just, just to enhance your glass. Oh, um, hmm. All right. What about this one? Class? Mm. Mm. These are the choices. A river, a lake, a reef. A rainforest. A rainforest. I guess so. Oh, yes. Rainforest. A rainforest. You are right. Rainforest. Uh, what about this? Oh, this is so beautiful. It looks like the Caribbean. What is this? It's Iceland. I uh, an island. An island. An island. You're right. An island. Repeat. Island. 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 An yeah. island. Very good. What about this one? Hmm. A ship. An archipelago. Now you know. <laughs> this is. Now you know. <laughs> that is the extra. Uh, what about this one? Oh, we all know that. Remember Finding Nemo and Dory? Yes. What is this? A reef. 
Oh, yes, mm -hmm. you're right. A reef. Yes. What about this one? So beautiful. Lake. A lake. A lake. A lake. Say it. Lake. 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 A glacier. 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 Let's start. A, a continent. Continent. A river. river. A river. And finally, class. Coast. A coast. A coast. Ah, Excellent. coast. Excellent. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll explore more maybe in lesson four. Uh, live inside. No, no, I'm not leaving it. Um, let's let's continue. All right, with uh, the presentation. Mm -hmm. That was a combined lesson. We're almost done. We're almost done. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, practical English tips from various English. That, that, that is part of our closing, okay, class? Um, useful tips, expand your vocab. That's what we've been doing. Listen and repeat. You know, I believe that we always encourage students, you know, uh, to learn the word, repeat the word and form a sentence, you know, uh, or just verbally or written. But, you know, that's follow the same process. When you watch movies, now Netflix and all the apps, you know, that now is so, you know, practical and available, easy access, you know, watch a movie, all right? Uh, it, subtitles, the subtitles could be in English, subtitles could be in Spanish, depending on your level. I see this is a combined class. If you already speak English and you've been, you, be, you also, uh, you have begun the journey uh, learning English, I will recommend to just watch the movie in the original language, in this case, English, with English subtitles. So you're listening to them, you know, you're listening, you're watching and at the same time, you're making sense with the words. Improve your pronunciation, of course. I already show you, you know, some tips for that. Learn the natural flow of English. How do we do that? You know, it's not impossible, you know, just uh, with practice. Uh, building confidence, you know, just doing what you're supposed to do. Self-talk, I always, I normally, when I have the chance and some students tell me, uh, Professor Pizarro at college or here at Elite Language Academy, self-talk, you know, you're, you know, you, you, you're, for ladies, you know, you're getting, you're, you're putting on your makeup or brushing your hair, doing something. You may, you may speak, talk in English in front of your mirror, no one is watching you. Gentlemen, you're, you're shaving, you're doing your, you know, working, talk, you know, speak, you know, no one is watching you. You may record it, you know, you may model some activities, you know, if you have time, record, you know, voice, listen, and then measure self-assessment, you know, uh, self-study. Thinking English takes time, all right, but avoiding translation. That's, that's when I began the lesson, I told you that. We tell the story, participate in public events, you know, that is helpful. Uh, oops, what happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. Let me move this, that is not allowing me. Yes, go to language cafes, yes, how nice. Uh, retell the story, participate in public speaking events if it's possible, like this one, congratulations. You know, we, you registered, that was your chance, you know, so you're doing a great job. Uh, travel if you have a chance. Uh, this is pretty much when people are in the United States and they are learning English. That's what we recommend. And actually, you know, when we do classes in person, we have activities in restaurants, you know, in some cafes, at Starbucks, and we ask the students to order, you know, to be exposed and just, you know, apply the, you know, just the main phrases and questions. But you can do it on your on your own, you know, when you travel. Uh, you can you you can do that. Anyways, and the last one is chat with C, you know Siri, you know from your phone. Anyway, <laughs> so it was really nice having you. It was really nice. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So, any questions before we say goodbye? I uh, stay extra minutes because I understand that some students got a little late. And I really want to really share, you know, what we prepare for you. 
All right. So this is our information. Uh, Daniela also Bermudez uh, will be, you know, uh, attentive to answer any questions via WhatsApp. All right. She's also part of the, you know, uh, the team is one of the team members here. So feel free to send us an email, any questions. And thank you so much for being a great audience. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your time. And hope to see you next class, lesson four. Okay. So have a great uh, evening, actually night here. Yeah, uh, ya estamos de noche. Okay, so hasta pronto. See you, see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Many thanks.